Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our beautiful planet Earth. But specifically, we're actually going to be discussing the gravity on our planet, and a few things that you may have actually not known about the gravity on our planet. Such as, for example, the fact that it's not the same everywhere. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So what we may uh, already know about gravity is that on Earth, the gravity is defined as approximately 9.81, actually not 82, it should be 8.1 meters per um, second square. What this means is that if I were to drop an object from, for example, a roof right here and have it fall toward the ground, it would actually be increasing its speed by about 9.8 meters per second every second. So after one second, it would be approximately 10 meters per second. And then after two seconds, it would be 20 meters per second. Now this is of course, ignoring the um, air resistance, but that's not really the topic of this video today. The topic is that this number 9.8 meters per second that you see uh, right here, or even though it says 9.82 meters per second, is actually not constant everywhere on our planet. And there's a few factors that um, will change the gravity depending on where you are. So for example, if you are in Singapore, which is right here somewhere, you have a much, much lower gravity than if you were um, in a city like uh, London, for example. Uh, so the gravity of Singapore is lower by something like half a percent in comparison to um, London. And this, uh, there's a lot of factors involved, but this is actually a common occurrence throughout the entire planet. There's actually a few simulations that you can check out that show you the gravity on our planet. And one of them is by uh, NASA. There's a uh, simulation known as NASA's um, Eyes on the Earth. And this shows you the mission known as uh, GRACE Gravity Field Mission, which kind of measures the gravity on our planet, but it also measures uh, the gravity um, in relation to the water uh, amount and ice amount. And so as you can see here, the gravity changes with time, which is even crazier. It, it means that not only is the gravity not constant depending on the location, it's also not constant depending on the time. So here it actually changes quite dramatically from low to high, uh, depending on the month and the year and so on. So gravity is a very, very tricky thing. Um, now, but generally speaking, this is how it would actually work. So normally the gravity would be the lowest at the North Pole and the South Pole. There's a reason for that. And the reason is very simple. Our planet is spinning. And because it's spinning, it's creating what's known as the centrifugal force uh, from the spin. And so the equator part of the Earth is actually receiving the acceleration away from the center because of the spinning. So basically, let me accelerate the spin a little bit. Because it's spinning, these edges are basically pulled out. And so the acceleration there is lower and thus the gravity is lower. The poles don't get that because if you look from the side here, they don't really get the spin. They get the spin this way, but not into the outer direction. And because of this, everything on the equator has a slightly less gravity by about 0.3% in comparison to the gravity at the North and South poles. So this so-called effective gravity varies on the surface of Earth by around 0.7%. So the, the minimum gravity on our planet is actually 9.7639 meters per second square. And that's uh, in Peru, the country in South America. And it's actually in the mountains. And it's somewhere, oh, I don't actually remember where exactly it is, but let's, let's look it up. So right here in Peru, there's a set of mountains in the Andes known as Nevado Huascaran. And uh, the gravity here is pretty low. And uh, this is actually the lowest gravity on the entire planet. Uh, and there's two reasons. One is that because it's actually close to the equator. There's the equator right there. But the other reason is that um, because gravity is also affected by the distance from the center of Earth, 
the farther away from the center you are, the less the gravity you experience. So if you're here on the surface, you'll experience 9.8 meters per second squared. If you're farther away, you experience slightly less gravity. And so because these are the mountains, you're technically standing on top of the mountain here and you're farther away from the center and you're closer to the equator. So together, these two make it um, one of the least gravitationally potent places on Earth. On the other hand, if you are closer to the pole and closer to the center of Earth, so if you're basically as close to the center as possible, so if you're standing in a big hole uh, in the middle of, let's just say, the Arctic. So if you go here and you actually find a big hole and you stand inside of it, you're going to be closer to the center of Earth. So you, you'll be experiencing higher gravity. Uh, and furthermore, uh, there's actually a part of Earth, um, inside of Earth, that experiences the highest possible gravity. And this is known as the so-called core mantle boundary. Let me just show you a picture of it right around here. Here, this is known as uh, Gutenberg discontinuity, and so here the gravity is uh, about 10.7 meters per second square. And this is mostly because this area here is very, very dense and very massive in comparison to this area. And so the gravity here is even higher than on the surface. But after this, it starts decreasing down to zero, right in the center of Earth. Now there is another um, thing that happens on the equator. And this is actually in regards to the spin again, but because the Earth is spinning, it also makes Earth not exactly spherical. It's actually kind of flattened out um, across the equator. Basically, it's bigger this way than it is this way. And once again, because it kind of bulges out, it actually creates a kind of a, a spheroid, but not exactly a sphere. In other words, it's more donut shaped. Um, so this equator area is farther away from the center and because of this, once again, it experiences even less gravity than it would otherwise. So on average, the equator area experiences about 0.5% less gravity than the northern area. So for example, if you were to stand uh, and weigh yourself uh, right here somewhere in the north, Greenland or even just the North Pole itself and you weigh about 100 pounds and then you were to go to the equator and do it again, your weight would actually be about 99.5 pounds. Uh, so basically the gravity here is quite, quite dramatically lower. Okay, not dramatically, but it's lower. And also just to kind of mention a very common misconception. So we do have, you know, satellites and spaceships and including the infamous um, International Space Station orbiting around our planet. And there's a common misconception that um, the these objects don't experience any gravity. Well, that's not entirely true. As a matter of fact, it's completely not true. The gravity here in a common uh, location for most satellites is, well, it's approximately 90% uh, of the gravity on the surface. So it's actually not that low. And even if you go quite farther away from the planet, even if you're like, let's just say somewhere here, the gravity there is also relatively high as well. So the gravity does decrease with distance, but not dramatically, not as dramatic as people think. So you'll still feel gravity from Earth, even if you go uh, all the way to Mars. It won't be as dramatic as it is here, but it will still be um, detectable. But anyway, let's talk a little bit more about the actual gra gravity on the planet. And so there's quite a lot of differences in so-called topography. And um, uh, this usually depends on the kind of the materials that uh, are present underneath uh, specific locations. So, um, for example, if you are in a location that has quite a lot of uh, deep tectonic structures, and a lot of like things like metals and uh, very dense materials, you'll have higher gravity there. On the other hand, if there's a lot of water and ice and a lot of um, like just even empty space, it will create much lower uh, gravitational field. And so these are known as gravitational anomalies and there's quite a lot of them around the planet. And you can actually explore them in more detail by using the NASA's um, eyes on Earth and just clicking this button right here and going to the gravity field map. And then you can even see this map in three dimensions, which is kind of kind of cool. It shows you the three dimensional map of the vari variety of gravitational anomalies on our planet, usually because of water, but also because of other things as well. 
And actually, one of the uh, last uh, gravitational influences is surprisingly air itself. And I believe we have the um, air pressure available in this other app that I've used before, known as earth.nowschool.net. And here we have the sea level pressure that you can kind of check out. And um, so the actual pressure of air creates what's known as buoyancy. And the more buoyancy that you have, the less gravity you'll experience. So in other words, the less air pressure there is, the uh, more gravity you'll feel. The more air pressure there is, the less gravity you feel. So uh, this is yet another reason why if you go into the mountains and you stand on the peak of the mountain, because the air pressure there is lower, you'll experience less buoyancy. And because of this, you'll actually uh, feel a little bit more gravity and vice versa if there is a lot of air pressure in the area where you are you're going to be more buoyant and experience less gravity so there's quite a lot of various effects or i guess uh, various factors influencing the actual gravity on our planet earth and just to kind of summarize them rotation of earth distance from earth uh, and specifically earth center and uh, the buoyancy, the materials underneath you, and the density of those materials. And uh, of course, the actual fact that you're closer to the equator and are experiencing centrifugal forces. So all of these factors influence the actual gravity, meaning that if you live in a certain city, you'll experience different gravity. So for example, in Alaska, in Anchorage, the gravity is 9.8 to 6 meters per second square. In Helsinki, it's 9.8 to 5 meters per second square. But on the other hand, in cities like uh, in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, uh, which is somewhere right here, the gravity is much lower at 9.776 uh, and Philippines Manila has it at 9.78. And one of the less dense cities is surprisingly Mexico City. It's uh, in higher altitude, it has much lesser uh, density underneath it. So the Mexico City, which is, I think it's somewhere right here, um, is uh, one of the less gravitationally active uh, cities at 9.776. And its altitude is like 2.2 kilometers. So that's one of the main reasons. And then you can kind of compare it to some of the U.S. cities, like, for example, Denver with 9.79 uh, 9, and Washington, D.C. with 9.8. So there's quite a lot of variety depending on the city you live and how it actually influences people and how it actually influences um, your strength and your development of your bones is or would make a pretty good study. It'd be nice to find out how these gravitational variations affect human body. But that's not a video for this, and this is all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And to finish this video, we're going to create a bit of an explosion. See you guys later, bye bye.